Ma. My name is Annette Anderson. I'm on the Council for the Indigenous Institute of the Americas located in Plano, Texas. Indigenous is a big word. There's 10 letters in that word. The word indigenous for today's video is about the people that were originally on the land of the Americas from the North Pole to the South Pole. This includes the Native American Indians who were located in what is now the United States, the First Nations people located in Canada, the Alaska Natives that are located in Alaska, as well as the indigenous people from Mexico, Central America, and South America. I want to start off by saying that some of us prefer to be called American Indian. Other people, especially young people, want to be called Native American. And at times, I'll put all three words together in this video and say Native American Indian. But what we're really talking about are the indigenous people, particularly of the United States. Most of us truly prefer to be referenced by our tribe or our nation. So I welcome you when I said Chokma in Chickasha or Chickasaw. So I would prefer for someone to say, this is my Chickasaw sister, or I would want one of my adopted daughters to say, my mother is Chickasaw. If you tell me, I have a friend who's Native American, the first thing I'm gonna ask is what tribe are they? Because there's over 574 federally recognized tribes. There's many state recognized tribes and probably many, many more tribes that are not federally or state recognized. And keep in mind in the state of Texas, although we have three federally recognized tribes and we have three federal reservations, we have other tribes that were detribalized and those tribes are still trying to get recognition today. If you're a child or a family member that has a Native American background, this is a good time to ask your family, do we know what tribe we are? Many people have more than one tribe. If you have a father that's one tribe and a mother that's another tribe, you may not have tribal citizenship in more than one tribe, but you may have cultural attachment to multiple tribes. This video may help you ask your own families and elders, where do my people come from? What tribe am I? If you don't know what tribe you're from, think about it this way. A long, long, long time ago, if your families were original people to a certain country, in those countries, we had tribes. If your family originally came from Ireland, there were tribes a long, long time ago in Ireland. If your people came from the Congo, there are tribes even today from the Congo. You and your family may not know exactly what tribes you're from, but maybe by learning what countries your family originally came from, you can become like a detective by looking at the world map and learning more about the history of the land where your family is from. Who knows, you might be from many, many tribes and that could be very exciting. Today, we're gonna to talk about some fun facts. I'm gonna show you some pictures of things that are in your everyday life that I think you love. I think you enjoy them. And these are things that were brought to you by the indigenous people of the Americas. Native people from the South Pole to the North Pole are responsible for the pictures that I'm gonna show you. Many of the things you're not gonna even know came from indigenous people. So what I want you to do, if you see a picture of anything that you know about, that you've seen, maybe you've even eaten it, I would like you to clap five times quietly so that I know that you recognize this. So let's practice for a minute. I'm going to count five and you're going to clap five times quietly. Remember, parents and teachers have ears and it hurts if everybody is clapping really loudly. So listen to my clap first and see if it's pretty quiet. Okay, I want everybody to try it with me. Thank you. So when I show a picture and I and you recognize it, are you ready to start? Wonderful. If your family lives in Plano, Texas or the Dallas-Fort Worth area, 
You are living on land that the Wichita Nation and the Caddo took care of. We still have Wichita and Caddo Nation citizens not only living in Oklahoma, but also living in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So we have a lot of rich history right where you're at today. These are different ways to say hello. I said one of them at the beginning, which was Chokma. I could also say Osio. Those are the two that I know the best because I'm Chickasaw and Cherokee. Most of you may not realize that American Indian foods, Native American foods, indigenous foods from the Americas are a part of your everyday life. But not only the foods, but some of the fun things that you enjoy are part of that too. So I'm gonna show you a picture and I'm gonna to count to five for you to clap if you've ever enjoyed what the picture is about. <gasps> Potato chips. See if you've ever tried this. <gasps> French fries. French fries are made from potatoes. So that means it's a food from the indigenous people of the Americas. You never knew you were eating indigenous foods when you went to McDonald's. You know where potatoes came from? South America, the Inca people were experts in growing potatoes and they grew all different kinds of potatoes. And you wanna know why? Because the more types of potatoes that they would grow, the less chance that the potatoes would get sick. Some of you may not know that an Irish potato is not Irish. It came from the Americas. So that means it's a food from the indigenous people of the Americas. The Irish barred the potato and they grew it on their land until there was a time when they had the potato blood. One of the American Indian nations that came to the aid of the Irish people was the Choctaw Nation. And you need to see if you can find out about that history because it's very, very interesting. Guess what? Popcorn is another Native American food. Fritos. Corn chips, they come from corn. And what about your favorite corn tortillas? Some of you may be thinking, wait, corn tortillas, that's Mexican-American food, right? No, remember that native people, indigenous people, many of you all who call yourself Hispanic and Latino and Mexican-American, you have grandmothers and grandfathers, your ancestors came from indigenous people. Corn tortillas, it's an indigenous food, but we have learned to call it by different names. So anytime you have corn, if you have beans and you have squash, you're eating an indigenous food. And this is the beautiful corn that we're still growing today. Some of you all come from an Asian background and you eat these kind of corns, these beautiful colored corns in your own meals. 60% of the world's food supply is reliant on foods that were originally crops from indigenous people. So other countries have learned to adapt and use our foods as a primary source of their recipes. I wanna show you this video. This is a, a person who has a cornfield, a Hopi cornfield. I wanna give it, people a chance to get a chance how to see the cornfield here. I know a lot of people have asked um, the, if the corn grows higher than you know the um, knees because a lot of pictures show the old timers hoeing their fields with small corn corn stalks but this gives I want to give the people a chance to see how a Hopi cornfield looks like you know all over the world and there's a lot of good good corns here we got um, this is a blue corn blue corn section and we just had a good rain as you can see you can pan around over on that side and you, we got a lot of good rain last night and it was difficult to get over here this morning so we had to come in the evening time <clears throat> but yeah this is traditional Hopi farming right here and this is where you have to plant and this is the uh, almost like the final result and this is the harvest time me and my family's already picked about four or five boxes I may be exaggerating but uh, we got a lot of boxes that we picked from these and I want to show some people 
to show the people the corns here that we can grow. You can see it's all packed in there nice and tight. You can see the goodness. It's a real good. Hopefully it's a mature one. Still, still white yet. You can see. So this is good to eat. So, oh, right like that, uh -huh. huh? You just boil it or whatever and we'll give this to Ron. My man Ron here. And if you feel the tops and see like this one, you can feel it. It's not, it's still soft so this one's kind of not ready yet. But you can still eat it. Yeah, after a while, after so long it turns blue. But right now it's still young yet so it's white. Well, let me find one that's older. Yeah, I like this one. Right here too. This one's a blue corn. So you can see it. There you go. The beautiful blue. Yeah, blue corn. And that's all of this section. And I have a, the white corn section on that side. But um, all of these are almost ready. That side is just about ready. But uh, I wanted to give the people a chance I mean, all over the world to see how a traditional Hopi farm looks. You may not know it, but we probably shouldn't call lasagna Italian lasagna. We should probably call it indigenous lasagna because the tomato was one of our crops. And we always think of these tomatoes as being Italian, right? Or they're in a lot of Italian dishes. How did that happen? It happened a long, long time ago when tomatoes were taken back and being grown in Europe. Now I have shown children real beans and they've looked at them and said, I've never had these before. Most of the time that's because you may recognize beans from being in a can, or if you've ever gone to Taco Bell or Taco Bueno, have you ever had a bean burrito? That's what's made from these things, high in protein, very good for you, and very, very cheap. Many people live off of beans as a way to survive because it doesn't cost very much and it can give you a lot of nutrition. These all came from native people. Bubble gum and gum. I bet you had no idea that that came from Native America. Many of the tribes, including the Aztec people, would use gum for dental care the same way as you brush your teeth. So this is what the tree looks like. And this, this is the latex, this rosin that comes from the tree. And now I'm going to show you a video of some young people that went to learn about the proper use and, and how they gathered the resin. So today, Troy brought us to a place called El Naranjal. It's about 20 minutes south of Tulum. It is a chewing gum factory. So we've arrived at the gum camp. It's not a gum factory. We're actually in the middle of a jungle with our local guides who lives on this property and this land has been in his family for generations. It's got to be seen. This is a small campament. Valentin has been working here for many years with his family. The main work with these people is extraction of the chewing gum. They have done it for generations. Okay. In fact, for the Mayan people, chicle, yeah. it means to chew. Valentin, vamos? Vamos, yeah. Mayan, Mayan word is cones for let's go. Cones. After they cook the chewing gum, they put it hard chewing gum in this box and wait for it to dry. To dry, exactly. This is old chewing gum. All this is old really? chewing gum. Yeah, it's it hard as a rock, actually. We're going to start from finding the tree in the jungle. Do you speak Maya? We want to learn. I right. speak Maya. Mashabel. Bishabel. 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 That means how are you? Atsut. Bless you. No. Oh, sorry. I thought you sneezed though. <laughs> this is one of the alternative trees they cut like for the resin, for the gum. Yeah. The Mayan name is Chunup. When they are in the jungle and they have a snake bite, they mix the resin of Chunup with another, the resin of another tree and they use it like an antidote. Yeah. They mix yeah, the two yeah. of them together the with water and salt and you oh. drink it. 
Saskab so. is the softest part of the limestone. And what they do, they use to burn it, so they produce powder, and they mix this powder with the resin of these trees to make their mortar or cement. To oh, uh, and to that's what they use to build houses. If you harvest completely the tree, you can reharvest the same tree after 14 years. It's, so you have it's to wait? 14 you have years? to wait 14 years to that's a long time. take the sap back yes, again. Bro, do you want me to carry the camera? Aldo, sure. this is nice. the chewing gum tree. Manilcara Sapota, the main characteristic is that if you look at the top, the bark is in lines. They have harvested the first part. Now Valentin is going to climb and it's going to start to cut from. Oh, look how red it is. So does that mean it's a tutti frutti flavor gum? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> strawberry. <laughs> Another thing, nice thing about this tree is that it's one of the hardest woods we have. So it's very precious for construction, for furnitures. So at the end, all of the cuts are going to lead to the same place. And then collect to the bottom with the bag. Yes. With, Who needs a hammer when you can use the end of a machete? You know what I mean? <laughs> what I love is that they're respecting Mother Nature and uh, their surroundings. And you can see, as you said, you know, you oh, can only do so much with them or you're going to harm them. And I asked you if, if the trees ever die. And you said, no, they never die because he makes sure to take care of them. They know how to do it. It's crazy because I was asking him how the Mayans knew that this tree will give you gum. We don't know. We don't know everything about the Mayan civilization because so much of the history and the papers were destroyed. It's gone, yes. Good job, yeah. man. Good job. Now Troy's gonna go and get you. Stay there, Troy. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Basecamp is always about hands-on. We try to be not just by watching, we not only want to see the process, we want to get involved with the process and try new things and try and see how they do it so we can experience things just the way it's supposed to be when we travel. Oh, nice bike, Troy. Nice! You tell that gum who's boss. Valentin was telling me a lot of stuff that I didn't know. He's Mayan, so I want to learn as much as I can uh, the, with the amount of time that we have to spend with him. I really appreciate uh, all the information that you give us. This is what it's all about. We want to see something different, something most people don't get to see, something most people don't think to see. And anytime I think I chew a piece of gum, I'm going to think about that time that I was at Cyan Can and learn how to make gum myself from scratch, from this guy who's following his traditions of his family on his land that they have lived for centuries. That is the coolest story. And there's something else that Native America brought to you, and I bet you don't like it at all, especially if you had Halloween trick-or-treat candy. You probably threw this away, right? No, this is what everybody loves, especially this time of year, hot cocoa, milk chocolate, cocoa butter. So that means it's a food from the indigenous people of the Americas. This is the cacao bean. And the seed pods, I have some of them at home, and they're huge, they're great big, maybe this big. And inside of it are the seeds, these brown seeds that are at the bottom of it. And that's what's used, that is what is used to make cocoa, to make chocolate. What about Concord grapes and grape jelly? So grapes, if you like those, those are part of our culture too. How can you have just a jelly sandwich? Where's the peanut butter? American Indians have known about ground nuts, earth nuts, or as you may call them, peanuts for many, many years. Do any of you all have jeans on or a cotton t-shirt? I bet you don't. <laughs> yes, you do. So clap your hands if you're wearing anything that has cotton in it because cotton comes also from Native America. Originally, cottons came in beautiful different colors and depending on the seeds, some of them are almost becoming extinct because everybody wants white cotton. The next video is about a young man. He's from one of the Northern tribes and the Northern tribes, by that I mean, this would be the Plains Indian tribes, many of which you might think of more as an American Indian tribe because of the feathers that they wear. Not all Indian people wear feathers and you should not wear feathers unless you were gifted a feather because of some honorable thing that you have done. We usually try to recommend to teachers and families to not do art projects or craft projects during the Thanksgiving time in particular, using feathers, we consider that to be rather disrespectful. 
So just wanted to give you that piece of knowledge for in the future. So this young man is a very good dancer and has won a lot of awards. And this tells the story of his competing at the powwows up north. At the Civic Center in Rapid City, it's competition time. Misu Mills is just moments away from taking the floor. It's a familiar stage. He's been performing here since he was only three years old. I learned how to dance by watching the people I look up to and just, I've been dancing since I can walk. Dancing is a part of being Native American. When that drum beats, that's just like your heartbeat. I feel powerful, I feel strong. There's nothing like it. You just feel like your thunder. When I'm dancing, I feel like I'm on air, on the clouds. Dance is a story. And you're telling your story. That's who you are. When you're out here dancing, the, the past is with you from ages back. We've been here for thousands of years. I'm preserving something for the older ones, what they fought for. All right, Team Boys Grass. Come on into the arena and we're gonna go to the Badlands for that song. What do you think people feel when they watch you? They feel greatness because they know I'm dancing for them. He's kind of this little warrior out there, isn't he? He's a warrior within, I'll tell you that. Contest song, please. Once you hear that drum, that drum starts beating, people start singing. It's on, it's just like a switch turned on. He tears it up out there and puts tears in my eyes just about every time. He told me before, he said, I don't even know what happens out there, Dad. It just happens. It just comes to you and you do that move. And while you're doing that move, you're just thinking of the next one and just keeps going. I'm fast because I'm just making sure everyone gets to see me so they know that I'm dancing for them. Misu will be judged by his footwork and his style and his ability to keep time to the drums. He's the youngest dancer in his category. But when the judges tally their votes, Misu's score puts him amongst the winners. In second place, 591 points, dancer number 4520, Misu Mills. And your champion. He's a high energy kid, so he keeps us busy and honestly out of trouble. How easy would it be for him to go the other direction? Way too easy. He has friends at his age that party and run around at the age of 13 that are eighth graders. And I have to keep a close eye on him and make sure he don't do these things. <laughs> Good job, sir. Proud of you. I want to show you some videos that come from our area of Texas, North Texas, and the American Indian community here, which is very vibrant and has get togethers on a regular basis when we don't have the pandemic. Our Native people have been hit very hard by the virus, so we're having to be extra careful about getting out into the community. We're all encouraging everyone to wear masks, wash our hands, and follow the same protocols uh, that are recommended by the doctors. So we appreciate all of you children. You've given up a lot of your friendships. You've given up a lot of hugs and a lot of uh, support from people around you because of this change in your environment. You are our heroes. You are going to be the courage in this country. So, you know, we look at you as small warriors uh, in this fight. And when you wear your mask, when you wash your hands, you're helping protect elders like me uh, from getting sick. So we appreciate all that you're doing and, and how you're trying to help us. So here's some different videos that I want to show you that 
shows how young our native people are in the American Indian community in Dallas, Fort Worth. share this last video our organization wants to thank you for inviting us into your home and into your classroom just a reminder there may be american indian native american students in your class and if you include everyone from south america all the way up to canada whose families were originally the first inhabitants of their countries then we have many indigenous children that have watched this show. So consider that some of the students and their families may be uncomfortable identifying themselves as indigenous people from the Americas. Your school districts may not show representation from the tribe in your classroom that who we consider indigenous people is very broad. And we hope that you'll take that into consideration as you discuss these topics in your family and in your classroom. Thank you very much and please enjoy this wonderful music video. together one boy saying yes we can 
each one reach one till we pull ourselves up cause we all one fan from the rest of the block to the prairie to the rock we connect that love Cause the people with power feel the power of the people when we stand as one I got you stuck off the realness, we be indigenous, you heard of us Max Evan, the murderers, bred in the love with the water and earned in the stand against hate Gotta know what the purpose is, we vibe, the climate is changing Signs of the times, it's time to start praying Pray for the world and community, prayers are more powerful when we're in what unity Day. Hungry for a change, new path to take Can't stay the same, it's been too long Pointing out who's right or wrong Can you hear me out? All we need is a little bit of love Take time to heal and it starts with us Hand in hand, I put my trust In one world, reunite, it's a must Hold on to hope, we can overload We can break the code with a single note Sing out for the world to hear That our time is now, no more for tears I looked into my son's eyes A new day in a new life Lift the veil in, dwell so peaceful Come together, one world, one peace what I know. We got beautiful differences, let me give you a peek Over 500 tries, but we all unique And if we cannot compete to eat, nothing could beat us Jealousy is more dangerous than diabetes See this unity? Imagine what it looked like You would think we would do whatever it took, right? I would do anything for this good life We could do anything if we unite Come on. You're made of you are my savior Say your prayer for our inspiration From the block to your reservation Any color, all my relations From the basement, worldwide invasion Every day we're painting our faces Fighting back by learning our language Dancing our dances, saying our prayers Stand